Welcome everybody to episode 5 in your Node.js tutorial series. This episode we're going to talk about how to set up Git and GitHub for our project. This will allow us to check in our code to version control and have that safe as well as track changes over time. This is basically going to be the way all software projects are built when you move beyond just your single person. So if you're working in a team, you're going to be using most likely Git. This video is sponsored by Filestack. This is a powerful tool for image uploading as well as transforming those images in your app. If you have an application that's going to be using a lot of images or you need the ability to quickly make transformations, this is the tool for you, as well as converting between different types of documents. Check it out, I will drop a link down below. So here is an example GitHub page, this is mine, and I have all of my repos on here, so I can, you know, keep track of all my code. But GitHub is different than Git. So GitHub is a company owned by Microsoft, and this is where you can upload your Git repositories. Git, on the other hand, is the actual software. So you can find that at git-scm.com and download for Mac or for Windows. So you can check if you have Git by saying Git in the terminal. Hopefully you get some usage response. I'm in a virtual environment, so it's running a bit slow, but no big deal. If you get an error like this, that just means you need to go install Git. So I will download that and go for the 64-bit install. We will say yes. And now go through pretty much the default install settings Nothing too crazy, I'm not gonna go through this step by step. I'm going to change the default branch name to main, that's recommended, and I will go with this setting as well for the where to use the git command. So hit next, yup. And I'll just went through the defaults on the, all the other stuff and I'll let this install. When you install Git, it's going to install MinGW, uh, which is basically a way that you can have a Linux-like terminal on Windows, which I generally prefer to use. If you're on Mac, then it's not really going to be much different. You can just use the normal terminal and the commands you're familiar with already. And that can be accessed with Git bash. So I'll launch that. This is what it's going to look like and I'm going to replace our PowerShell with git bash. You can zoom in with control plus minus and we're going to change directory into this location of our project which is in documents and then into uh, customers. And you can clear the screen with clear and now you should be able to say git init, initialize an empty git repository in this location. Now you can have the option to show hidden files or folders. So when I enable that, you can see this dot git. This refers to our repository and does all the file tracking. So don't touch this. You don't need to do anything with it. It's just good to know that it exists. The first command you should learn is git status. And it'll tell you what branch you're on and the different files that are showing up here. So you can add files with git add. But before we do that, I don't want to add everything which you would normally do with a dot. I actually want to ignore some files, specifically node modules. We don't need to check that into source control. So what we can do is we can create a file called .git ignore. And this is a file that Git is going to use to figure out what files to not put into version control. Source control, version control, all the same thing. I'm using words interchangeably here. So you could say node underscore modules save that and now when we say git status that node modules is no longer there so there's a lot of different files you might want to ignore there's actually some good default files that you can just start with out on the internet so i'll usually just search toptal and then say what language i'm using so toptal node.js git ignore and you can find that right here so we can copy this this is just going to put some of the most common file formats and stuff that we don't want to put inside of version control and I will just replace this here and now we have a bunch of stuff and most likely we've covered everything that we're going to need to ignore cool so we'll save this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add everything so git add dot that'll add the current directory and now when we say git status you can see they're green and it shows that there's some new files being um, watched and ready to be committed so when we say git add dot it's saying hey we're about ready to, to make our first commit but we haven't actually committed to it yet to actually finish we'll say git commit dash m with some quotes and some message usually i'll just say initial commit 
and it tells us to run these commands first here so we will need to set our user email and username so I'm gonna go ahead and take this here paste that down here and then I'll just go back and change these values stupid activate windows is in my way alright so I set the email now I need to go grab the username as well so I will copy this and change this to Caleb Curry all right, so we set up that configuration and now we should be able to commit. So we can use the up arrows to go back to our previous command, git commit dash m initial commit, and it makes that commit. Now, when we say git log, we should see that commit in our commit history and it says initial commit. So far, so good. Now, when we say git status, it'll say that there's no changes, but if we went in and changed any of these files, let's say inside app.js, we changed something here. Like let's just remove this line, for example and save now when we say get status and notice there's a change and we can track those changes over time so if you introduce a bug you can backtrack to the different commits to figure out where that bug was introduced now from github you're going to want to create an account or sign in and from here go ahead and create a new repository give us some name node.js and select an owner if you are part of multiple organizations. We'll go with public, ignore all this stuff. We're not going to initialize a repository because we did that on our local machine. So we'll create repository. And we will go with the second option, push an existing repository from the command line. So we'll copy this over and we will paste that here and hit enter. Now this is actually going to pop up a sign in for me where I'm going to have to sign in. And I just got that done. So we should now be able to issue these commands and you can see it is working on it. Cool, so once that's done, we should be able to visit our repo, do a refresh, and you can see our code is now there. And that means you could go to this URL and compare your code to mine if for some reason something's not working, or you could just clone this repo if you are familiar with doing that. So you could take this, and from any terminal window, you can say git clone, paste that URL, and now you can access that code on a different machine. You would just say cd into node.js and then you're going to need to get all the packages so you would say npm install and that is the process for cloning and installing the packages npm run start and there we go there is our unique identifier so far so good you got your project you got it up in github and you can pull it down to another computer so now you have a backup for all your code and you can now change code more aggressively without worrying about breaking it and not being able to figure out where you went wrong because you could always go back to where you had it. There's a bunch of different git commands out there. It can get a little complicated, but it's something you'll become more familiar with over time. And fortunately, it's used for pretty much all software projects. So regardless of what language you're using, those are some valuable skills to have. Thank you for watching. In the next video, we're going to get started with Express. Peace out.